but you've got to then turn that as an advantage itself yeah. into even more. So we're into champion select then there. Coming thick and fast here. Elise, Kennen, Vayne banned out by NIP. Of course, all aimed there at Kubon, uh, at Kubon and of course at Libby, <laughs> uh, uh, Libby, at uh, Makla uh, with the Vayne as well. On the other side, Evelyn, Lissandra and Fizz banned out. It's left gen open and they're going to take that first pick. It's left a lot of champions open. It yeah. looks like Mitra Makers, they, they've been talking this over quite a bit and they're really scared of the Evelyn that Mimer well, which we haven't seen, will have. And I really was curious to see if, how that would go as well, but it's obviously wouldn't be in the jungle. Maluno doesn't really play Evelyn too much there, but fortunately for Mime, it looks like he might be on Shen, though. I think we have seen Maluno jungle Shen before, so it's not necessarily in concrete that it will be in that lane. Uh, the Fizz ban, though, is justified from what we saw earlier. Well, and especially for the fact that Twisted Fate was left open there as well, and that's what Meteor Makers have locked in. And we saw how strong Bjergsen was on Fizz earlier on, so a bit of a respect ban there in a way, but also fits to their composition perfectly because we've seen Fizz is absolutely destroying Twisted Fate pretty yeah. much across the board. And I'm really, I'm still a little bit surprised to see Twisted Fate. I mean, he's been picked or banned in 97.5% of the games before this That's week. That's a lot. And he's only won 50% of them. Well, the thing is, it's even worse if you look at Charu's stats individually. Five games with Twisted Fate, only one victory Oof. there. So we'll see how that works out. Zach picked up here for NIP along with uh, the Caitlyn as well for free. So interesting to see whether Maluno is going to play Shen in the jungle in that Zach top lane, which is kind of fits more to what NIP have been doing in the last games. Yeah, it, that's actually a very good point. We've seen Maluno play Zach in the jungle. We've seen him play Shen. So you really yeah. don't know where that will go. It gives him that factor of surprise that you don't know exactly what lane they're going to go into. So they'll have that, but whether or not they're going to run it in the jungle, I, I think I think it will be Zach in the top lane because Mimer, he didn't do amazing, but he played a lot better and looked a lot more comfortable on Zach in their game earlier versus Gambit than he's looked previously on that rise. Well, on the other side right now, Thresh has come all the way through to MYM's second round of picks, funnily enough here. That will be locked in for Libic, and Makla is going to be picking up the Cogmore. And Ugh, we've seen him play dangerous. Cogmore, Vayne, uh, I think you mentioned this yesterday. If we think back to the likes of IAM, uh, Cologne, and Singapore, that's when you really play those late-game late hyper carries that you get out of this. So we'll see how Makla does with that one. It's really dangerous, though. Like, just look at what's already been picked, and look at the Cogma. A Zach can jump on top of you. A Shen can get in there on his ultimate as well, or taunt you and lock you down. Like, that is a very ballsy play that shows that he's kind of really confident in his team to prevent anyone from getting to him, and he'll be able to do the damage that he possibly could. And you're very right, like, back in Cologne, or I am Cologne, he played phenomenal. Like, his micromanager on Cogland Vane was just ridiculous. It was through the roof. And I believe they placed second in the end. Actually, it was a little bit lower than that, like third or fourth in the end of, uh, that, of that event. But we're we'll seeing what's going to do here. We saw Tabs do very well on it yesterday. Well, let's have a look then for NIP, what they're going to finish with. Nami support and Bjergsen going to be taking Zed. Now, that is a scary thing. Yeah. Okay, so this is the kind of champions I love to see him on. Yeah. Like, I remember back he's playing Orianna a lot. He's playing a lot of team comp oriented uh, champions. That was never his play style to me. That's never what he did well on him. Going back to his roots, it seems, going back to what he enjoys playing with these heavy assassins, like even Awesome was mentioned yesterday in the interview with Shox, he's going to do well on him. Like, you just know, if he picks an assassin, it's pretty much a guaranteed one lane for him. Yeah, because, and we saw it with that Fizz earlier, that he just loves to get kills. Yeah. He, he has a real hunger for, for building up kills and for stalking you through the jungle, you know, and that's something that, Zach's, uh, that Zed, sorry, is going to be able to do for him brilliantly here as well. So. Meet your makers, what are they going to round off with here? Are they going to go for a Carthus? Something that wouldn't be a total shock to us because we have seen Kubon run yeah. a Carthus before. Yeah, we have. And it was actually, I can't remember the team. It was a Kazakh. It was alternate. Yeah, it was alternate. Kurt was playing Kaz uh, Kazakh in the top lane. He got exactly. the double buffs um, early off of Vi, off of Arnea. But unfortunately, he kind of backed in the bush, didn't see Kurt jump on top of him, took it away from him. But he did. He played a, a really strong Carthus, even though that happened. And maybe they'll be able to do it again. Like, that's a lot of global presence from him. It kind of slightly counters on it. It forces Shen's hand to make a move when that ultimate comes down, so you can either get him out of lane or something like that. Well, let's see then. I see the final picks coming in there. Teleport, no surprise for Charu. Once again, running that one. I think 100%, uh, I think we can safely yeah. say. I don't honestly remember a single game where there's not been a, a uh, teleport with Charu. <laughs> I'm thinking back to Intellectual Master Singapore. Did he even, or did he play with teleport back no, then he too? No, tele he's been playing with teleport. Does he remember why, how to why? play with Ignite? No, I don't think he does. Uh, <laughs> what does this spell even do? <laughs> he doesn't know what it does anymore. Uh, so yeah, I was stuck with that teleport. Really got his big faith in that one. But as you said, this Twisted Fate, yes. Massive pick or ban ratio 
not so massive when it comes to win ratio and especially not for the poles of meet you makers yeah and we're gonna see how well it actually works i mean if we think back to every single game he's played and how many aggressive mid laners he's played he has had so many opportunities for kills where we know like he would have got a kill with it night people escape escaping with like 80 150 health and he would have been able to pick something up but he just he sticks this teleport every single time and it, it gives you a little bit of an advantage because you're twisted fate obviously you can ulti pretty much around the map completely and then just reappear back in your lane so you can't have it shoved up against you so you saw kuban there giving what to me looked like a bit of a motivational speech throughout his team and Honestly, meet your makers need some motivation, some inspiration from somewhere, wherever they can pull it right now, because things are starting to get a little bit dire for them, and they're probably the only team that we can really start to single out at this point that are in, in desperate danger, I'd say, because as you said, to, to really get up there in terms of the playoffs, they're probably going to be looking at a perfect Super Week, which is, yeah. is just not a thing that you'll expect from them after you know the way that things have gone so far, but... We stand to be corrected on this one. We're going to get in game for it. It's Ninjas in pajamas taking on Meet Your Makers with NIP here on the blue side. And again, about level one. Nami on the one side, Thresh on the other side. You've got the likes of the stun card coming out there from Charu. Uh, you've got the taunt for Shen, for Mima, if uh, you know he wants hmm. to go that way. So there's a lot of danger for both sides. So I was actually wrong. It will be Malino on the jungle on Zach. So he's going to have that... Uh, that presence, obviously not going to be strong super early on, but in terms of level one, uh, I, I'm trying to think. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'd have to get over to NIP just because of the control that they can have. I mean, you can have a knock about a Maluna if you want to take your E level one. You can have a taunt across the entire team, just like you are saying before. The bubble following that up. And Matrix Makers, all they really have for a guaranteed stun is that hook or that gold card. And it looks like NIP are just going to push Meech Makers away as they wanted to be aggressive and kind of take that blue buff. And, you know, you and Demon casted Meech Makers way back in the day, you know, in EPS, when they were playing, when they were unknown. And they were always known for this really aggressive level one play with Pink Wars, one of the first teams to use it. I'm really surprised to see them kind of stray away from their roots. I think because of this level of play, which you can't compare to what it was back then, even, you know, with the level of teams and how close things were, you can't compare that right now because... If things go wrong for you at level one here, you basically lose the game. I mean, it's definitely not over at level one. I've seen that countless times being proved incorrect, but the fact is you gain a massive disadvantage if you mess things up at level one. If your opponent's ready for you, if you've you know prepared wrong and you think you can do a certain play which you actually can't by the end of it, if you've scouted wrong. So I think that's why Meet Your Makers have fallen away from that style because it's too risky for them at this stage. And I was just thinking, like, they're one of the few teams that stuck around together after the spring qualifiers for LCS when they didn't qualify. And then the they... The only team, to my knowledge. I think Alternate did as well. well Not the exact Alternate, same yeah, roster, but but pretty much pretty pretty damn close and like, just one of the few teams and it shows that you know just because they lost they're going to keep going for it they're not going to replace anyone on their team they're going to keep trying to work for this and right now Kuban we haven't seen this in a long time but it's something that's always dangerous he's going to have blue buff given to him at level 1 and he's going to come back to lane with it that means he'll be able to farm and push the wave out of bottom very easily so if Maluna was thinking about going for a level 3 dive on that bottom lane around 330 it's going to be completely shut down and that's been the that's been the, the strategy that teams are using against Meet Your Makers. It's just to kill Kuban early. Well, the thing that they've gone for here is that uh, Cogmore, Thresh, mid lane is Maluno. Oh wow! And Makata gonna go head to head from this one. The uh, flag thrown down. So MYM, I, I stand corrected here on terms of aggression at level one. They are pushing down here. They're gonna try and go for this red buff. Yeah, I mean it's pretty much needed. Oh, Charu going very low in the top lane, <laughs> almost going down there. The ignite burning on from Mima, so he wants to put that early pressure in there. Mia makes us still in the jungle on the bottom side of the map though. So let's keep fixing to that for now as the top in the top lane doesn't quite land in on towards Charu and that's back and forth still Jarvan is waiting here on the backside he's actually stood on top of a ward as we see another flag toss going down and Molino, uh, Maluno is too scared right now I think to actually stick around and really do this buff and just say okay we're just going to do it because the smite's up from Makata you know it's going to be dangerous Makata actually losing out to that one Maluno going to get it back and there is the bubble Makata going down first blood comes in and it's picked up by Bjergsen on Zed and that is the thing I was talking about Jason as though I'm telepathic or something or psychic not sure which is the actual right <laughs> one for that Big psychic. Uh, either way uh, Bjergsen picking it up at level one disastrous for MYM 
that is to say the least. Like, we talked about him earlier on, how deadly he can be on these assassins, how much he likes to stalk his prey and roam around, and giving him that kill early on gives him the ability to do that. And I was really surprised to see that Maluna waited at his red for a long time. He knew something was up. Like, they knew Makati was giving blue buff over to Kuban, and he wanted to wait for any sort of counter jungling. And he was there perfectly, and because of that, because of that patience, they pick up a kill. And look at this. They're going to push in now for it once again. Bjergsen starting off here. Got Boots and the Vamp Scepter in there already. And he's got that red buff running, which makes him all the more dangerous. Limit took a whole chunk of damage there as Zack came in as well. He weren't quite able to get kill number two, but this is how those avalanches start with that snowball at the top. Yeah, it just takes one snowflake, or one kill in this case, and because he's level 4, like, he wasn't pushed out, he wasn't denied any CS in lane, or not, or uh, experience in lane, he can pretty much 1v2 Meteor Makers almost at this point, as long as he dodges that hook, and Maluno coming in yet again, it doesn't look like, can I be going to commit to this? Yeah, I'm not sure that anyone told Bjergsen about that one, because <laughs> he's just bombing away there, off on the side, as Maluno comes in, probably wondering, when are you going to help me do this? Okay, you're not, so I'm just going to back away from that one, but Bjergsen obviously... He, he doesn't want to throw the advantage that he's just got because if he got caught by Libby, can end up going down and Makla got the red buff. Then it's a different story again. Yeah, very true. And, and actually, I think he can go for a kill on Libby very soon. Like, one more hit of Harass off his Q and a, a living shadow if he goes in. He should be able to pick up the kill and he would have Flash to get away. And you really got to watch this because if Bjergsen picks up another kill, like, this is a crucial point. If he picks up that one more kill right now, it's going to be so deadly. And wow, Kuban getting caught. Yeah, and he's taking so much damage to that bubble. Just locking him up, freeze expertly underneath that tower, making sure that he doesn't tank up any hits of it. And right now, 34 to 34 CS, or 35 to 35 between those two <laughs> 80 characters. I, I could keep counting that one <laughs> until the end of the game. Wouldn't be the best cast I've ever done in my life, though. Uh, but yeah, the point is very, very even between the two 80 characters. It's actually even across the board in CS. I mean, yeah, Bjergsen's a little bit behind, because, but because of that kill, because he's melee, he's actually keeping up fairly well. And we didn't even mention just yet in terms of how lanes are, because there's been so much action as Maluno. He's trying to come in for another fight. And charging that one up in the end. I think Libic actually out of range of him there, just about. Bjergsen continues to build up. And level six for Bjergsen. Let's have a look at his experience here and see how close he actually is uh, to hitting level six. Never mind, because Maluno's going to jump in on this one. Let's see if they can actually finish off. Actually, there is a hook miss. The flash was burnt by Libic. So either way, They've managed to burn out those summoner spells for them. And I can tell you now that Bjergsen is very close to hitting level 6. And without that flash, Libic will most... Actually, I don't know, because he has exhaust up. So he should be able to keep, Bjerg, uh, keep Bjergsen off of him from doing the full combo. But that is very deadly. It actually pushed him out of lane. And with Mackler left all alone, which it looks like Bjergsen's going to realize he goes in. And then just go in there. A lot of damage coming down. Hook comes in, but here comes Maluna once again. There is a kill. He's going to get exhausted underneath the tower. But look at Mackler. He's gone low. Char uh, Charu gonna teleport in, goes get the start, uh, stun card down as we see Stan United come in as well from Mimer. They're able to walk away after picking up the kill. Yeah, it was a great job by Mimer to pretty much come in there and save him. And they they realized that Charu was level six and they still went for that fight either way. And Charu didn't even teleport or ultimate into there, he just used that teleport. And right now, blue buff is up for both uh, both teams. Charu actually invested in a pink one right there. He wants to potentially steal us away, and it's not gonna happen. Nope. Not going to be able to get in there for that one. And, well, it was such a close thing for Meet Your Makers there to, you know, picking up that exhaust that went down onto Maluno. Let's not forget, even if he would have actually been taken down there, he wouldn't have actually been taken down because of his passive to keep him alive. As once again, Kuban gets pulled up in the bubble down in this bottom lane. And that's Freezer's chance here to really start pulling ahead on the CS now that Mackler and Libic had to leave that mid lane. And he's been doing it very well, sitting at the highest CS of the game, 64. Currently, they have that turret already very low, and I mean, they're already won on the lane swap. If they pretty much get this turret down, they're pretty much going to be having a huge lead that they really can't lose unless they make a big mistake. And I mean, just think of all the objectives that would be available to them. They can easily pick up dragons, they can easily push that middle turret and start contesting the blues, which is a really huge buff that Meech Breaker is going to need. Kuban or Charu are going to need that blue. We're on NIP side. No one can really benefit from it except Freeze. Comes Jarvan down to this bottom lane, just in time to save the turret from going down. Actually picking up the CS there as well as he goes. Well, Bjergsen here, level seven. <laughs> He is so ridiculously strong at this point. I mean, if you compare him over to Kubon, the levels, and to Charu for that matter, 
The levels are actually the same from them, but the damage output is just a different world. Got that Cutlass in there, got a second Longsword off. Uh, so he's just doing a hell of a lot right now. 2-0-0. Once he actually starts to roam around, what, now that this bottom lane's been freed up for NIM and they, uh, for NIP and they can actually think about coming middle to go 2v2, it leaves Bjergsen open to so many different options. And look at all the lanes he has to go to. I mean, we do have a Seeker's Arm Guard picked up for Charu, so he luckily has that as a defensive item, but I mean, the entire team of Meteor Makers is relatively squishy aside from Akade, so he has any champion he can go for. It's like, hmm, who do I want to kill this time? I'll go for you and then just blow you up. And he has the ability to do that right now. Yeah, and I think this is the probably the champion that Meet Your Maker's setup says don't let him get ahead because of the fact that they've got that Cogmore in there that they're going to so desperately need to protect. And yeah. Zed, uh, Zed is one champion that can dive straight on him and do such an incredible amount of damage before they can even react to it that... I, I don't know, this right now already, and I, I don't want to be too negative because this is, we're only less than 10 minutes into the game, but the way that it started is not positive for MYM. Yeah, and, I mean, you, you or we both kind of talked about in terms of level 1 action on Meteor Makers. You used to be really aggressive, and you mentioned how bad it can turn for you if you lose that initial fight, but here comes Bjergsen and Maluno. And here is that level 6 that I was talking about. The death mark is down, as is Kog'Maw. And, well, he's not running back to base. He's just going to wait until his passive actually blows up. And that's from out of nowhere. This was Libic and Makla happily whistling a tune and farming away in middle with a Zac coming over a wall and a Zed coming over a wall to put absolutely everything onto you. And that opens them up a Dragon as well. And the keyword, middle lane, the, the shortest lane in the entire map. And they're still getting jumped on like that and unable to skip. They're going for this Dragon right now. Artificio does get caught by Hook, though. Well, they're going to be able to take the Dragon. Box going down there by Libic, and honestly, a defensive box, because I don't think they were really thinking of uh, being able to get anything from that. Deficio did have his Tidal Wave available. There was uh, Mima who had his Stan United, and look at the damage he's putting down there onto Charu already. And I was trying to point out before that Dragon happened was, you, we were talking about level 1. You know, if you lose a level 1 at this point in the game with this, the skill level, the caliber of these teams, how quick it can snowball out of you, or out of your hands. And it wasn't level 1, but it was pretty damn close to level 1, and you're seeing the snowball effect from that one snowflake. Yeah, so down to just half HP there from that combo. Coming out of Bjergsen, who's now up at 3-0-0, holding all of his team's kills, which we've talked about before yeah. as well, is not necessarily a, an amazing thing, but on paper, it's just going to mean that Bjergsen can help this game go forward, and eventually, obviously, the rest of his teams are going to be picking up the kills. Maybe wrong on that, he might end the game 20-0-0, and they win 20-0 <laughs> on kills, but we'll have to see no, about that. No, it's a good that. point, though. Like, having all of your kills on one target, if you don't get defensive, if you make one misplay, there goes your entire team fight, and there goes a huge uh, advantage that you had right out the window, and one thing that NIP did with that early advantage that they got was take that dragon, and I want to point that out because they have the lowest amount of dragons taken in European LCS at 22. They're in last place. The next person that's above them is Meet Your Makers at 34, and they only got two dragons in the last two weeks. Yeah, and that's that's a that's a giant difference as well in statistics. Think yes. about it. Over 10 is Charu again. Gets another blast out of Bjergsen, who was thinking about going in there, and. Well, in the end, he steps away. The stun card was pulled, but it's not going to be enough. There's a death mark down, but Makata's in there as well. There's a flash, so Bjergsen goes around, then jumps away. Amazing from Bjergsen. He's not finished here. He's actually going to find Makata. Stan United coming in as well. Oh, and there is the slide over the wall. That would have been the play of the week by a very, very long way if they'd have picked up that kill as well. Now Kubon's coming oh, over, he and he actually did manage to catch him, but oh, this ultimate. Here comes there Shet is the coming down. Shenton stops it, and NIP, the coordination between just these two players right now as they push in for even more damage. Kubo now to half HP. He's got no mana here. That could be very dangerous if they spot how little mana that he's actually got here. As Charu now coming around the side. There is the taunt coming in once again, but they do finally manage to shut down Bjergsen, and now they're going to try and take Mimer as well. He flashes to safety. Crazy. I am... I am hot and bothered after that. That was ridiculous play to Bjergsen, showing how amazing he is at this game. 17 years old, has more skill than probably every single caster at European LCS uh, combined. I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> wow, oh, okay. Giving me a lot of credit, Joe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just the play was fantastic. The coordination between him and Mimer, the taunt, stopping Kuban from getting that kill initially with the ultimate and pretty much blowing a major cooldown out of him as well.
incredible stuff there. NIP on the same page. And this is what we were talking about from them before. Is Charu going to get taunted under the turret? Only meant one hit from him, uh, for him, though, as he was right on the edge of that range. But honestly, Mima can really bully him in this one. Kubon actually is coming in, but look at this. Maluno is now coming down to the bottom. There is another taunt coming in. The slow goes down. Charu is a dead man, and it's Mima that picks up the kill. Finally, he tried to do it a little bit earlier on, but, well, good stuff. There's the gank coming in with the lantern as well. Tidal wave comes across. Deficio stuck inside of the Cataclysm. It's going to finally time out for him, but I'm not sure that he'll be able to escape it. The box is down as Freeze is actually going for a kill on towards Makata and he's actually going to pay the price but here comes Bjergsen from the side. He's got a ward in the brush so he's got complete vision as there we see him going down onto Mackler instead. Barrio used. There's a death mark and Bjergsen's going to keep going here. Is he going to be able to get any more? He got away from the passive of Mackler. Mind blown right now. Bjergsen again just on a different level. And this is why I will never play Zed. It's like I never played as well as Bjergsen can. After seeing this, it just makes you realize how bad you're at the game, Joe. It's just, it blows my mind how the skill differences between me thinking I'm, you know, I'm decent at the game to that. It just shows he deserves to be in the LCS. He's not done. He's not oh, done. He's, he's not going done in for Libic here. Realizes that Charu's actually around as well as we are. I'm going to see the Lantern coming across as well. What's Bjergsen going to do? Puts down a bit more damage. He's obviously got great escape mechanics on this, just dodges casually. Death sentence being thrown out there as well by Libic, but he will walk away from that one. And that will leave us, if we have chance now, to finally look at the gold in this game. Well, it's a lead for NIP. It's not a massive lead, but it is a lead nonetheless. Two and a half thousand at 15 and a half minutes into this game, we can see 6,000 to 4,200 gold there when you compare Zed with Carthus. If you compare Zed with Twisted Fate, it's pretty similar as well. Yeah, so you, you pointed out that there is a gold difference between NIP and MYM, but it's very small. And it's for a good reason because, actually, well, it's, it's really dangerous for NIP because you mentioned it earlier. All that gold is funneled into Bjergsen. 5-1, if he dies, there goes a lot of NIP's damage. So right now, what he's doing is... He's roaming around. He's trying to get other people fed. He's trying to shut other people down. And that's exactly what you need to do. Take that advantage and just roll with it. You have to make plays because if you get 20 kills in lane, if you don't do anything with the other lanes to help them out, if they're losing or not necessarily winning as hard, it doesn't matter how many kills you have. Well, there is 142 to a 110 CS lead for Caitlyn over the Cogmore. Shen. He's ahead of Karth. It's always hard to really say who we should put head to head in this <laughs> one with the way that they've gone, you know, with that double AP comp and switch the lanes around a little bit. But you now Shen doing a great job and it is Charu who has always been a good farmer getting that farming again with Twisted Fate and he's gonna obviously rely on that later on in the game to be to be split. Got almost the ultimate counter into the game in this one in terms of having a Shen in there who can also, well, he can even outrange that Twisted Fate when it comes to moving around the map with the ultimates. And we've seen Mutual Makers play Twisted Fate so many times. You mentioned the statistic earlier. Five times played by Charu, only one win. And we've seen so many games in the, in the recent past where he plays Twisted Fate, he gets all this farm, he gets all these items, but he gets caught in a team fight late game and they pretty much it forces Meteor Makers to just hit that pause button for the next until the next Baron comes up. But right now, Bjergs, he's going to be getting ganked here, or is he the one ganking him? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Where's he going to go? Well, death mark down. He uses a shadow to get away, and there comes Mima. Bjergsen back in for this one. Who are they going to go for? Bjergsen going very low. Here is the Requiem coming out as well. Bjergsen not dead from that one, and he's still having to go. Charu going to go down. Flash comes in. Makla's going to die as well. Mima now still alive. He'll take a chunk of damage. No, he won't from Cogmore as he shadow dashes on towards Libic here. Not got enough to finish off the kill, but that turns into a two-on-one as Makata now being bounced upon by Maluno. Ace in the hole. Kill for freeze. And they get the dragon in the meantime during the entire fight at top lane, taking a turret. Like, that was so much gold. And that was a little bit of caucus from Bjergsen, but it worked out so well because it got a kill over to Mimer. It shut down that top lane and Mutri Makers. He has Kuban all alone. That's very, very good. But he's just behind right now. He's 1-0-1. One, one. He doesn't have the farm he needs. And NIP, they're not done yeah, just yet. They're pushing that middle lane. That's the thing. You say it's very good, but how good is it really, actually? They're losing an inner middle turret for taking that outer bottom turret. Mimer actually here yeah, is going to possibly go down as he flashes away, avoids the death sentence. They put a ward down so they know he's gone into the jungle now. And look at this, the rest of the team come across and Mima is gonna survive. Those, those Shen Zed mechanics right there. <laughs> People always talk about those vain ones, but 
I'm at a loss of words for just the amount of plays that MIP's pulling off right oh now. Oh my god, here comes Bjergsen again. There goes Libby. He's gonna get killed off by the death mark. And actually, says thank you very much. I'll get pulled in for that one. And here we go. He wanted his bloop up. for it as well. He wanted his bloop up back yeah. because Lippet took it from right before. He's like, mine, gimme. But he's already going for that last whisper and you can't build anything against him to stop him except like a GA or a QSS or a Zonius and Michi Makers doesn't have the money for that. You do have Kubon in the top lane right now to go for a gank on him, but he's just going to commit. Yeah, Kubon, I mean, he's going to put the exhaust down there. That's going to help things out with Bjergsen. I'm quite sure he's just going to turn Ooh. this one around because Shen is going to be coming down from this one. There is Mima coming around. Here comes Makata now as well, which may turn the flow of this battle. He puts a ward in so that he's got the vision, but he's scared. They're scared of going in on towards Mima and Bjergsen right now, who be between them have just been an absolute killing crew and they just forced them to back away. I'm scared for them, Joe, <laughs> to be honest. And because of the items that Mimer picked up, which we have to touch on, that Spirit Visage gave him the cooldown reduction to pretty much ulti Bjergsen again. Same exact situation, saved him again. Well, I didn't save him fully last time, but was able to save him this time. And right now they're still pushing this top lane while the rest of their team just pushes other lanes. Not even just that, but the magic resist as well. The good chunk that you get from the Spirit Visage. They're up against a double AP comp here that right Technically now- Technically like two and a half because of Kog'ma. Well, yeah, they, they don't really have much damage between them anyway. So that's a great thing for uh, Mima to be having oh, in. Libby. And right now, Libby is going to be the target, acing the whole coming through. Who's going to get the kill? It's Bjergsen, of course. That will bring him up to 8-2-1. Just, just wow. I mean, Libek, I can understand why he went there. Like, they needed to get that vision, that much-needed vision to stop, like, a potential bearing from coming in because they can't afford to let something like that happen. And honestly, with their composition, if they did catch NIP inside that Baron pit, Bjergsen can only ulti one person. He can only burst one person down extremely quickly. Like, give him a couple more seconds, he'll kill someone else. But with a Karthus sitting in the middle of Baron pit, when you get that ma uh, magic amplification debuff on you, Mix that in with the Twist of Fate and a Kog'Maw, you can go down really quickly. And we saw that the damage that Charu can put onto Mima, and honestly, it's not really a lot. We're gonna see him actually go in there for the turret. Charu really wanted to take that turret away right now. He does have Destiny available, but he can obviously get pulled out of that here by Mima. Is he gonna go for this one? He's not quite got the range, not got the cooldowns. Charu does get away. And good, good, because Bjergsen was coming as well. <laughs> He's like, I'm coming for you. That whole Jaws theme. I'm still waiting for someone to make a video of that when Bjergsen just chasing people down. But Mutual Makers are trying to respond. They're trying to push middle right now. And it's just the only farm they're getting is the farm that NIP is allowing them to have. Like, they're the ones shoving the lanes up, giving them a, like, a wave or two, and then just making plays in other, in other places. Bjergsen at level 14 against a level 12 Kogma, a level 13 uh, Twisted Fate, a level 13 uh, uh, Wow, Karthus. When he hits at 16 point, he could easy 1v1 anyone. Look at him. You can almost read his dun, mind here, like, dun, I dun, am dun, gonna dun. go for this one. Oh. Well, Charu's still at the top, so it might not be over just yet. MYM got no vision of where he possibly is, and Bjergsen is just gonna wait. Now he comes around the corner, here's the move onto Charu. What? Death mark, Charu doesn't care, he's gonna let himself go down. Bjergsen on a killing spree, is now 9 to 1. <laughs> the damage, like, I don't, I don't have anything to say to that, that was... That is just what a Zed does if you let him get farmed. And right now he's getting two-man ganked here, but honestly, I think he could fight this. I think he could win this one against Kubon. It's not actually in the wall of pain there for a while. And he's going to go over. Who's he going to go for? He's going to go from both because Shen's coming in. He can maybe get the taunt onto them. Are they going to go under the tower? No, they can't. NIP are in. MYM's pace there behind the behind the turret at the inhibitor. What is going on right now? NIP did manage to get Libic in this top lane. And honestly, this game is so one-sided right now. NIP are absolutely running away with it. 10-2-1 now the scoreline for Bjergsen. And this is why when we are talking about earlier him playing Zed, why I was so excited, why I w like seeing him on these assassins because of what he does on it game in and game out. He's, he's probably one of the most consistent Consistently good players, mid lane, always making it happen. I don't think he's ever had a bad game. And right now he's going for Charu again. He's going for Charu, and Charu's not getting away from this. Death Mark was down. Actually, Deficio. Uh, I know it wasn't Deficio. It was Mima that picked up the kill. Kubon's dead. Either way, he will fall. Here comes the Requiem. But well, is anyone low enough? No, they're not. He'll stop Bjergsen going home. But that's pretty much all it will do at this point. Just wow. 16 to 4, 23 minutes in. 40,000 gold to 30,000. Six turrets to two. And you have a 10, 2, and 3 Bjergsen right now. Equal in farm and ahead of Kuban, but equal farm to Charu. Equal farm to pretty much everyone on the other team of Meech Breakers, if not ahead. And they're going to pick up another dragon. A lot of extra gold to spend. And right now, 
Wow. Breeze has 2,600 gold to buy with. Safisu has 1,700 gold to buy with. Mimer has 1,700 gold to buy with. And even Maluno has 1,000. So the items they're going to pick up when they back are just going to make them that much stronger. And Bjergsen, look at that. Almost 11,000 gold 24 minutes in. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of gold, and he's just added in the black cleaver there uh, to everything else. He's seen a runic bulwark being picked up, actually, by Maluno on Zack. We're going to be seeing a lot more coming down once Freeze basically decides it's time for him to go home. He's just pushed out that middle way for a while. We've got Deficio bringing in an Oracle to this game, something that I don't think Libet can really dream of being uh, able to pick up at this point in the game, honestly. Uh, they've had no control of their jungle for a very, very long time right now. Freeze, he's still in this mid lane. He really doesn't want to spend. He's got, th he's got 3,200 gold. I think he mistook that having that much gold at the end of the game, he can take it with you home or something like that, or into the next game because he can't do that. He's gonna. But when he goes back and buys, like the power spike he's going to get will be ridiculous. And we honestly don't even need that spike right now as long as Bjergsen doesn't misplay, doesn't get caught, and doesn't die. And Makati, he might be the one getting caught. And he is going to get caught here, gets bubbled, gets pilt over Peacemaker because he's slowed, he's hit by the tidal wave, they're bouncing all over his face, and he's managed to flash away. Pilt over Peacemaker, not sure, no, it didn't quite get the kill onto him there. Bjergsen is once again unstoppable as him and Mimer dive underneath the turret. Now they're going to have to go for this one as they get pulled in there. Minions will come back around, that means Bjergsen and Mimer can hammer the turret away, and that was the final turret outside of the base, and now they're going for Baron. Look at the squad that we have, it's a two-man squad with Mimer and Bjergsen, and then Defisio, Maluna, and Freeze are just sticking together, all buddy buddy. They're just like splitting in this two per or two group, three group uh, compositions. And right now, with what's happening, Meech Makers has to send multiple people. Actually, you know what? They have to send like the entire team to kill Bjergsen and Mimer at this point. And when that happens, the rest of NIP just push these lanes. They already got the middle turret, the middle inhibitor turret, and that inhibitor is for the taking. And I guess <laughs> and Freeze is sitting on 3,500 gold to back with. He's yeah. gonna be at like 4,000 when he goes back. Yeah, that's gonna be... 3,800 now, almost 39. Ridiculous stuff. And actually he's decided, you know what guys, I was thinking about backing off to spend, but I'm just gonna farm a little bit more. I want to, I want to buy I all I my items at once. 5,000 gold to be going home with. Because here comes Bjergsen. Oh, that's the dark passage to actually get him out of that one. And well, it could probably do without another death here, Charo. 0 6 2 right now. He's got a Lich Bane, which we would say he can use to split push and do something here for this match. But honestly, he can't even really push out of his base before Bjergsen just dives on him. And we do have Freeze finally <laughs> just toying with him now. Look at that. But we have uh, Freeze. He did go back and buy, picked up a full Phantom Dancer and a pickaxe. Still sitting on. Oh, no, there's not much gold left after that. But does buy Home Guard Boots because they're going to go for the final push here, Joe. There's the wall of pain coming down. Honestly, Bjergsen doesn't seem to be giving the monkeys about that one. He wants this inhibitor. Layway is constantly being put down on top of Bjergsen to try and get him a little bit low for when any fight might break out from this. He does get slowed and looks like they may try and go for him with this one, but NIP probably not going to be scared to fight. Maluna going to dive on top. Makata is going to be bubbled up as the tidal wave comes across. There's two kills coming down now. NIP, a freeze on a killing spree. Three men left alive. Charu, he, there he is with that Lich Bane. Told you he's going to use it for a bit of split pushing, but NIP, they're so far ahead right now. They're up in the base of MYM. They've taken down the first Nexus turret. Mima doesn't care about tanking up that one. He's going to take it down maybe before the teleport even gets into them. They're going to go for a couple more kills right on top of the fountain. Bjergsen now dominated. Mima's on top of it. And well, he gets shut down, almost losing the Maluno as well. Here comes the Requiem. The heal coming out. Maluno doesn't even die to that one. Tried to get the untargetable there as he jumps away with an elastic slingshot. And that will be the Nexus going down and Ninjas in pajamas picking up a fantastic win, a phenomenal win. There's so many adjectives out there that don't even do this game justice. I, I have to completely agree with that, Joe. I mean, that is just the effect. You can see on Bjergsen's face, that smile, the effect of one early kill, of that one little mistake that Makade made, and one smart play out of Bjergsen is completely take advantage of that situation, pick up that red buff, and more importantly, make it so he could do a 1v2 lane and still win it. Well, I've got a feeling that he's not going to be playing any Zed next week. <laughs> I think that might be getting banned out against Bjergsen. That's what we thought about the Fizz as well, and Meet Your Make has actually banned that one yeah. out to stop any counter to that Twisted Fate, but... Honestly, they didn't need the fizz. This one was just a 
very one-way street, a very much a one-way street. 12 to 5 Bjergsen finish there. That is more kills than every single other person on the map put together. Yeah. Oh, so I was kind of, I was kind of actually head. not. They it's got the 13 between oh, okay. them. I was like, kind of, I was like, is that true? But that's still the point. It, was, it was close enough. You yeah. had to count it, and that's how <laughs> close enough it was. That's how much Bjergsen just dominated that game. And we talked about snowballs. Once you get that thing rolling, you can't stop a Z like what's, that. What's bigger than Avalanche? Well, nothing. Bjergsen. That's what Bjergsen was <laughs> right there in that game. But we should talk a little bit about the other players on his team as well. Because yeah, I guess we can. It, Mimer. It wasn't just a one-way street. Mimer is the one that really sticks out because he saved Bjergsen in a lot of those scenarios and also allowed him to come back into fights when he was already backing away. Okay, Mimer's coming. I'll let him get the taunt off a little bit of damage. Then I'll go back in there to finish off and you know, life steal a bit up in the process. And between them, as you said, they were a two-man kill team constantly moving around, yeah. pushing down towers, getting themselves kills. The other three, you know, they kind of went about their business. Maluno joined in every now and then. Uh, we have to say that Maluno, his persistency in the mid lane early on to get them the kills was what started things yeah. off for Bjergsen. That, that, and his the patience. Gang that they, you know, the jumping from the side uh, with Bjergsen coming through the wall as well was what got the ball rolling. And his patience at red, like we, we mentioned earlier, is he, yeah. was, he was waiting. Like, he knew Makati would come around. Like, they kind of knew they would give uh, Kuban that, that blue buff, and then he would try to steal away the red, and he just waited. And because of that, that patience, they were to pick up that kill. And I do have to say this for Mimer, because we've seen him on Zac, we've seen him on Rise mostly. He looked so much more comfortable on Shen in that game. Whether or not it was Bjergsen being so farmed, he felt, you know, like, ah, oh, we're going to win this game. But either way, the confidence boost that you get from their last game of the week, going into a five-game Super Week next week, yeah. like, you need something like that to get you going. Well, Meet Your Makers really could have done with it, I think, as well, going yes. into that soup week. Don't know what's in store for them next week, but one thing that we do know is that we're going over to Demon and Quick Shot to break down the game. Thank you very much, Joe and Jason. And, well, what a dominant performance from uh, Ninjas in Pajamas. And they were all ninjas, but they weren't in pajamas, but they still played very well. They were absolutely everywhere for the entirety of that match. And, you know, we were highlighting the fact that uh, uh, Zed and Shen being played by Maima and uh, Bjergsen were just unstoppable. Yeah. Wherever they wanted to, to go and pick a fight, they made it happen. They were a lethal, lethal combo. Let's talk about the, the team comps from the very beginning, though, because when we saw the picks and bans, you believe Meter Makers actually had the better team comp. Yeah, I actually think if you just think champions against champions and think about it that way, I feel like NYM had a slightly better, well-rounded comp. They had the global presence of the Karthus and the Twisted Fate. They had a lot more damage threats. They had the Cog more in there. They had protection for Cog from Jarvan and for, uh, uh, with Thresh. But the problem was they needed to get to a point where they could get that damage down. And what that meant is the time was on, or the ticker was on for NIP to get control of the early game. Their only real damage threats was the Caitlyn and the Zed. Yeah. Zack and Shem are never really going to be killing potential, especially when, it's a, uh, especially when it's a jungle Zack. So where do you feel it all effectively went wrong? I mean, other than Bjergsen going crazy. I think... I'm going to be very honest. I think it was just Bjergsen going crazy that was really the big influential thing. You know, very early on, MYM, they did try to invade and still red buff, which counter, you know, it worked against them. It gave Bjergsen first blood. And basically from there, he just got such a massive confidence boost that he tore through MYM. I think MYM needed to counter gank Zed more often and maybe not have put the duo lane middle because that just allowed uh, Maluno to sit there with Zack, sit with Bjergsen, babysit him, get him to level six, and then just pick on the super squishy under level duo, uh, duo lanes. Well, I mean, it obviously leads us up to the replay we have in that top lane. And really, it was the, it was the combo again, like you mentioned earlier, Mima again. and Bjergsen, the, the double ninjas. <laughs> so the very first time it happened, I think I yelled, oh my God, more times <laughs> yeah. in those 30 seconds than ever. Surprised Bjergsen it didn't come across the stream either. We were running right next door. Dives past two towers, goes in between the jungle, picks a fight, caught the stock channel Requiem. That gets interrupted by a taunt. It was just... Moments of the moment. Now, MYM did clean up, right? They did clean up. But in this particular replay, let's actually pull this up on the screen and we'll, we'll talk you through it. Bjergsen was once again in the 1v2 situation in the top lane. And uh, MYM actually poisoning themselves to, to gank him. So let's drop the replay and start this one off. You'll see that Twisted Fate comes in to join the party. And I'm going to put this down in half speed because Bjergsen dodges the gold card, first of all, with the death mark, right? Then he continues to put a lot of damage down. He's on the way out, at which point you can see the Shen Stand United arrives. Bjergsen brings Shen back into the fight by diving to his clones. 
and he continually deals damage over on the side. Even through a gold card and through the damage of Requiem, it's not enough to kill him. So once he does get a little bit of free time, and more importantly, his cooldown's back, comes back into the fight, uses the clone, shadow slashes up, and manages to get more damage done. To add insult to injury, Mime even uses that shadow dash taunt to block and avoid that Akathian surprise damage. This was maybe the third time this had happened, and it happened three or four more times throughout the course of the game. Bjergsen just went godlike in that match. And to be hypercritical, personally, I actually, I thought NAP Wally did actually obviously win out the game. If that would have been against a better opponent, maybe not to discredit me or makers in this match, it was kind of still sloppy. I think it was. I think it was, very, it was overconfidence on NIP, mm. and I think they got away with it, which meant they could keep doing it. And I think that's basically why the match played out that way. And I think the biggest mistake for me as far as MYM concerned is those first levels one to six. I think if they'd maybe done different lane matchups, maybe a little more difficult for the twist of fate of the Karthus against the Zed, but it wouldn't have been as easy for Zed to be babysat. There was no threat of shutting him down. There was no jungle pressure that could have helped. So I think a little bit of early game decision making could have gone a long way to helping MYM out. Well, nevertheless.